Okay, uh, on this lesson we're going to talk about dependent probability. Now we talked about um, we talked about probability, so we know that probability is the number of chances that an event can occur all over the total possible outcomes, the TPO. Think of knock over TPO. Um, the probability will always be a fraction. It'll always be greater than or equal to zero, or less than or equal to zero. Never can be um, less than zero, and uh, never can be greater than one. Okay, but it can be anything in between, including those numbers. All right. We've also talked about um, more than one event happening. However, uh, we're going to talk today about dependent probability. And dependent, just like dependent, uh, so independent means it's not affected by anything. Um, but dependent means that uh, the probability is going to be affected by the previous event. So let's look here. Dependent events are events that are dependent when the number of outcomes is affected by the previous event. So dependent events are events where events are independent, are events are dependent, excuse me, when the number of outcomes is affected by the previous event. All right? So this second event will be affected by what happens in the first event, so whatever event comes before it. And therefore, if this is a dependent event, this uh, event's outcomes will be affected by what happens here as well. Um, some key phrases that have to deal with dependent probability are without returning. That means if you have a bag of some marbles and you take one of those marbles out on one event and you don't put it back in, then the total possible outcomes in the next event will be affected. So in the first event you have three, but you take this one out and you don't put it back. So this is now gone. Um, now how many total possible outcomes do you have? Well you have two. So it just goes to show you how these dependent events work. Um, the outcomes will be affected by the previous event. All right, And if you don't return it, it will be one less. If you don't replace it as well. Not putting it back in, those are other um, ways of saying without putting it back in. All right, let's go on to an actual uh, look of how, we, of how we solve these. How do you determine dependent probability? Well, first step is to find the probability of the first event. All right? Um, once you find the probability of the first event, step two is to find the probability of the second event. All right? Remembering, though, to subtract the outcomes you took away from the first event from the total possible outcomes for the second event. And we'll see what that means in a second. Step three is to multiply both probabilities. Whenever you're dealing with dependent probability, you have two separate events. Um, you will multiply. Okay? Then simplify your answer. All right? And that's all. That's all these steps. All right, let's go to a problem and see how this works. You pick a card at random. Random just means that all of these cards have an equal chance. Without putting the first card back, so this already is, is already telling you that we have a dependent probability problem. Without putting the first card back, you pick a second card at random. So the first event is me picking the first card, and the second event is me picking a second card. So I have two events. All right? Find the probability of the first event. What is the probability? Remember we looked at this notation. Probability of picking a blue on the first card and a blue on the second card. All right, so the number of chances for blue for the first event are one, two, three, four. So I have four chances of getting blue out of the total possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So out of six. Four out of six chance of getting blue on the first card. However, I'm not putting it back in. All right? So therefore, one of those blue cards is now gone. I'll take out this one. Now, how many total possible outcomes do I have? Well, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Or simply one less than six. So I have five total possible outcomes. Now, how many chances do I have of getting blue now? One, two, three, because this one is gone. So three chances. So that's the probability of the second event. Now, we're going to multiply because we have two separate events happening. 
And let's see if we can simplify this. Uh, 4 sixth can be simplified by a factor of 2. 2 can go into 4 2 times, and 2 goes into 6 3 times. Can I simplify this anymore? No, because 2 and 3 are 1 away. Uh, can I simplify 3 fifths? Uh, let's go through divisibility rules. 10, no. 5, yes, but no. Um, 9, no. 3, yes, but no. So 6 is out. Uh, 4, no. 2, no. Um, so therefore, this is simplified. And let's see. When you multiply fractions, you can always cross cancel. All right? So let's see. 3 and 3, yes. A factor of 3 goes into both of them, one time each. Any more? No, because it's one away. And can I simplify this? No, because no factor other than one can go into the numbers. All right, let's multiply. Whenever you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerator times the other numerator of the other fraction. Um, two times one, two. Next one, one times five, five. And you also multiply the denominator um, with the other denominator of the other fraction. And the answer is two fifths. This is simplified because no other fraction, no other, no other factor other than one can go into two and five. So the probability of picking a blue card first without putting it back and then picking a blue card again on the second try is a two out of five chance. Again, the answer is not uh, greater than one, which in this case would be five fifths and it's greater than zero-fifths, so the answer is within what probability should be. All right, let's go to the next one. You pick a marble at random without putting, without putting the first marble back. That tells you what? Dependent probability. Dep prob. Without putting the first marble back, you pick a second marble at random. So I have two different events happening. The first marble being picked and the second marble being picked. So I know I'm going to multiply. All right, probability of getting a yellow. Probability of yellow on the first event is 1 out of 1, 2, out of 2. Now I'm not going to put that yellow marble back in, so I'm taking it out. How many total possible outcomes do I have now? Well, just 1. So 1 is my denominator. Total possible outcomes is always the denominator in probability. And how many chances do I have of getting green? Well, one. One green. So the probability is one out of one for the second event. All right, now I multiply the probabilities. Uh, see if I can simplify first. One half, no, because one is already listed. One over one, no, because one's already there. Uh, no, because one's there, no, one's there. All right, one times one, one. Two times one, two. Answer is one half. Probability of... of Getting a yellow, then a green, without putting the first marble back, would be one half. And let's do one more problem. Just so you get it, I think you're getting the hang of it. Um, you can see how simple it is. All right, let's do one more. Let's try to see if you can do this one on your own. Pause the video, and then come back and see if you get the right answer. All right, you pick a marble at random, without putting the first marble back. That tells you dependent probability. Without putting the first marble back, you pick a second marble at random. So I have two different events. I don't have just the event, the event. I have two events. All right? So therefore, I'm going to multiply them whenever I have two separate discrete events that are happening. Um, probability of picking green, so let's see, green uh, is one out of how many total possible outcomes, one, two, three, four, out of four. Uh, I'm not going to put that green back in, so that's out. So when I pick my second marble that's going to be red, um, how many total possible outcomes do I have now? Well, I have one less than four, which is three. And how many chances do I have of getting red? One, two, three. So three chances of getting red out of three total possible outcomes. All right, let's simplify if we can. I know 3 over 3 is 1, so 3 goes into both of them. You get 1. And let's see, can I simplify this? No, because 1's already there. No, 1's already there. No, 1's already there. All right, here we go. 1 times 1, 1. 4 times 1, 4. 1 fourth is your answer.